Hi, welcome to your lesson on linear regression. Linear regression is just mathematical terminology for calculating the line of best fit. Until now, we've been estimating a line of best fit, placing it as best as we can. However, there's a, a mathematical way to actually calculate the placement of the best line, and that's what we're going to see today. This is a big idea. It goes much beyond mathematics. Finding a line of best fit and basically finding correlation between two different variables is something that's used in all fields, uh, psychology, in uh, economics and so on, every field uses this. So we're going to take some notes on the packet that has been provided to you. Let's begin here. We have the scenario we've already seen. We have temperatures and sales of ice cream. And we can see as temperature goes up, it's the independent variable. The dependent variable, sales of ice cream, also go up. Here's our scatter data plotted, the green points. We can see it's a pretty strong correlation. And we can also kind of uh, assume causation here because that uh, temperature rises will lead to more sales in ice cream. Uh, let's see what it asks us to do. Is, first of all, state the mean point. We already calculated this. The mean point is just calculated by finding the, the mean of the x values, so the mean of the temperature values. Seven of them added up divided by seven. It's an average. And then we find the mean of the y values, which are the ice cream sales. And we get this number. Those two make a point. That point has been graphed in the graph. The point is 20.9, 480.9. The mean point is right here in orange. And uh, until now, we've seen that drawing a line of best fit through the mean point is a good technique for getting a good line of best fit. All right, so let's create an equation for our, the line of best fit, or the one that we've estimated. I've drawn a line of best fit here that I think is a good estimate. Uh, to find the equation of a line, we need a B value and an M value. In an equation of a line, y equals mx plus b. m is the slope, b is the y-intercept. So we're going to look for the uh, b value first, the y-intercept. If you follow the line I estimated here, all the way down to here until it hits the y-axis, it's close to negative 50, uh, it's about a negative 40. So I put v, b value of negative 40. Now we're going to find the slope, m. To find the slope, we can do something called a slope triangle. So you can go up and then across. Basically, you're trying to connect from one point to another point on the line, but you need to know the rise, which is a vertical rise, and the run, which is a horizontal change here. So from here, we go from negative 40 up to here, which is at 480.9. So that rise is 520.9, because you've got 40 units here, from negative 40 to 0, and then 480 units here. So together, 520.9. That's our rise. Our run is this uh, distance here. We begin at 0. And we go all the way to the y value, sorry, the x value, which is 20.9. So our run is, goes from 0 to 20.9, so run is 20.9. So slope is calculated by doing rise over run. So over here it has m, I do slope, rise over run, divide the two values. If you put that in your calculator, actually divide 520.9 by 20.9, you will get 24.9. That is our slope. So now that we have the slope intercept and the slope, we can write the equation of the line y equals mx plus b, y equals 24.9, the slope, x minus 40, this is the y-intercept. Those are our estimated line of best fit. Now we're going to see how to do this on our calculator and get the actual best fit line, and we're going to compare it to our estimated one and see how close we were. So our, maybe you're like me, you're worried about the accuracy of your estimation. What if we drew a line that's not quite right? What if it's in the wrong place? Sometimes our estimation could be way off, so why don't, why don't we find a way to get the, the perfect line? To do this, we use a method called least squares regression. It kind of works like this. You have uh, your data points, which are in blue here. You measure the distance from your data point to this potential line of best fit. Measure that distance, and then make a square of it. So, for example, if this was three units, and you made a square, this square would have an area of three by three, nine. And then you make a square for every point like that. And you add up all those square areas. And if you can find an area of all the squares added up that is the least possible, then you have found the line of best fit. Because that tells you that each point is the least distance possible from that line. So that's why it's called least squares regression. Uh, it's a kind of a long, complicated process. There's actually a bunch of formulas you would use, starting right here and through here, through here. These formulas, and this, there's a method for calculating uh, the line of best fit. Uh, however, we don't need to know all these formulas here. You can study them on your own. Uh, we are lucky to have the calculator, which will do it for us. 
So now we're going to take a calculator and figure out how to plot a scatter plot with a calculator and how to calculate the regression line, or in other words, the, the line of best fit. So we're going to use our calculator to do the scatter plot. Let's start there. So here's the calculator. We're going to turn it on. Anytime we want to do statistics on the calculator, we want to use a button that says stat. So find this button right here, stat. That button will allow us to enter data and do different calculations of the data. So I'm going to press stat. In stat, we have these menus here. We have edit, calc, test. We're going to use edit and calc today. We're going to begin with edit. And number one, in edit menu, we're going to use number one, edit. That's where you enter data into lists. So I pressed one. I can see I have different lists here. List one, list two, list three, and so on. These lists have values in them already. Maybe yours do as well. Uh, often, uh, you'll be getting at the calculator has been used before. Maybe there's some lists. We want to clear that data so we can enter our data. So we go up to the list like that using the arrow key, press clear, and then it's flashing here, press enter. There, it clears that list. Now I'm going to go list two and clear it as well. I'm going to go there, go up, clear that list, enter. Now my lists are empty. In list one, I'm going to put my X values. In list two, I'm going to put the Y values. So our X values are temperature. I'm going to enter those, 17, 22, 18. So in list one, 17, enter, 22, enter, 22, enter, 18, enter. Next one is 22 again, enter. Oh, was it 23? Sorry, 23, enter. Then 25, enter, 19, enter, 22, enter. So I have my list one, which is my X values, my temperature values. Now I'm going to go to list two and enter my dependent variable, the sales of ice cream, beginning with 408. 408, enter. 445, enter. 421, enter. 544, enter. 614, enter. 412, enter. 522, enter. Try that one again, 522, enter. All right, I've entered the two lists. Now you want to uh, plot a scatter plot. So we can go back to here. We want to plot a scatter plot. Our calculator can do this for us. So when you want to do a scatter plot, you have to go to this stat plot, these statistics, plotting of statistics. So I'm going to go second because it's blue. Second, the blue button, stat plot. Notice this one is plot one is on. Sometimes you'll notice uh, when you arrive here, it'll be off. So in order to turn it on, let's say I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to second step. Let's say you got to this menu and you see it, it's off. And you want it to be on because you want to plot the points. So you hit enter there for plot one. Then where it's flashing on on, I'm going to hit enter. Now I've selected on. And now you look at this. Here's scatter data here. Here's list one and list two. That's where it gets our data from. And here's the kind of point it's going to use to mark each scatter point. It's going to be like an open square. So everything looks good on here. The main thing is to turn it on. Second quit gets you out of every menu. Now I want to see my data, so I'm going to put graph. Graph is how you create a graph, whether it's scatter plots or graphing a line or anything. Graph. All right, I don't see too much. Oh, I see this curve here. All right, don't see much else. I don't see my scatter data for sure. I see this. So this graphs some equation. That's is often going to happen in your calculator as well. Uh, if you look at where the equations are, you go to y equals. In y equals, this equation has been entered there. Maybe yours has one as well. I'm going to press clear and clear it out. Now there's no equations. So when I hit graph, it will graph no equations, no lines, no parabolas, nothing. However, I still can't see my stat data. That's because this window is set to show values from positive 10 to negative 10, and negative 10 to positive 10 here. And our data is not within that 10 by 10 kind of window here. Our data is beyond that. It goes like it was in the hundreds was the ice cream sales, right? So to see data better, we can either change the window, which allows you to change what your minimum x value and maximum x value and so on is on the graph, or you can hit the zoom button. This is a quicker way. Zoom button, if you go down the list, and we're going to zoom in on the statistic. So we're going to zoom in on the stat data. So number nine on zoom is zoom stat. That changes your window to look at just the statistics data. So I'm going to do that one. And look, it changed my window here. It changed what part of the graph I'm looking at so that I'm looking exactly at where my data points are. And this should look a lot like our, like our graph on here. Let's look there. 
let's see, does that look kind of like our scatter plots here? Yeah, we got these three going here, like up and down, and we got this one, then up and across, up and across. Yeah, that's our scatter data. There it is. So now we want to find the line of best fit. All right, let's see. So if you do a line of best fit, you're going to go back to your stat menu. You're going to go back to the stat menu. And instead of doing edit where we entered the data, now we're going to use the arrow to go over to calc. And in calc, look down the list here. Number four says lin reg, which means linear regression. And again, linear regression is the way of saying finding the line of best fit. So we're going to go to linear regression. Press enter there. Here it says, where am I getting my data from? Well, list one, list two. In case one of those doesn't say list one or list two on your calculator, here's how you change it. Here I'm on list two. I want to just make it list two again. I'm going to put second and see the how it has list one, all those above the buttons, list one, list two, list three. So number two is list two. So I'm going to press that there, list two. That's how you change it. You don't need the next one, don't need the next one. Uh, calculate. I'm going to press calculate here. It's going to calculate my line of best fit. There it is. So check it out. It gives it, instead of M, it uses A. All right. So it has AX plus B. And it says the A value is this. And it says the B value is this. So A value is about 25 if I round it. B value is negative 41.2, let's say, if I round it to one decimal place. So it gives you those values. All right. Let's take a look at what that, that looks like. So I'm going to take that line and write it. I just found the values. So it tells, tells me the line of best fit or the regression line is y equals 25x minus 41.2. So now comment on the accuracy of our estimated line. So this is the one that's been calculated as the best fit line. Look back on the one we had when we estimated and compare. What's your comment? Are they close? Yeah, I think our estimate was pretty close. It's not always going to be true, but in this case, the data was pretty strong correlation, so it's easy to draw a good line of best fit. But let's say the data was really scattered and we drew a really bad regression line, I mean estimated line. So our regression line might be totally different. In this case, the accuracy was quite high, but it was still not the actual line of best fit, right? We we're still not perfectly precise. All right, so now we're going to learn about what the correlation coefficient is, which is on the back of this page. And we're going to come back and uh, calculate the correlation coefficient. Uh, there's a man named Carl Pearson who came up with the idea of a correlation coefficient. This is called the Pearson product moment correlation coefficient. It is always a value between negative 1 and 1. R equals negative 1 is perfect negative correlation. R equals 0 is no correlation. And R equals 1 is perfect positive correlation. Please pause and make sure you add these notes to your page. Right, looking further, we see here a perfect positive correlation. See, the points are perfectly lined up. There's no scatter at all, so R equals 1. Here's no correlation, 0. Here's a perfect negative lined up in a line, negative 1. Here's some rules you should know. When R is between 0 and 0.25, the correlation is very weak. From 0.25 to 0.5, it's weak. From 0.5 to 0.75, it's moderate. And from 0.75 to 1, it's a strong correlation. Please pause and, and make sure you add these to your notes as well. All right, where do you think the R value is here? Take a look at this one together as a group. Decide, where do you think the R value is? All right, pause and, and agree with each other. And now let's check. Here's the R value for this one. Hope you're close. Next one, what do you think the R value is for this? Pause and guess as a group. All right, and here's the R value. Hope you were close as well. Now, how do we calculate it on our calculator, the R value? So if you go back to here, second. OK, um, many calculators don't have the R value turned on. So here's how you have to begin. Press mode, go down, down, down to the next screen, and you'll see something called stat diagnostics. If they're off, you're not going to see R value. If they're on, that's how you get R value. So I'm going to press on. Mine was already on. Make sure yours is on. Second quit. Now when you go to stat, and again, calc, that's where we got the linear regression. Number four, go back to linear regression. And there, all that's the same. When you hit calculate, if you have your stat diagnostics on, you'll notice the R value is given here in addition to your line. So here's our R value. All right. So our R value is pretty high. 
and there's a 